Asma Jahangir Conference, which celebrates the work and legacy of a dear colleague and a friend, a brilliant human rights defender, activist, lawyer, who left us far too early. Martin Luther King said in 1967, upon receiving an honorary doctorate in civil law, it may be true that the law cannot change the heart, but it can restrain the heartless. It may be true that the law cannot make a man love me, but it can restrain him from lynching me, and I think that's pretty important. And so, while the law may not change the heart of men, it does change the habits of men, if it is vigorously enforced. And through changes in habits, pretty soon, changes will take place and even the heart may be changed. To play the role that Martin Luther King assigned to the law, I think we need two things. Something I'll call good laws, and then good people to enforce it, good institution. Not every law is good. Breaking bad law may be a good thing. Martin Luther King in Birmingham broke the law. The Underground Railroad, who brought slaves to freedom, broke the laws. Right now, people who protect refugees and migrants in Europe are breaking the laws. So good laws are the laws that govern us all, that governs our global society. They are the principle and standard at the heart of universal declaration and convention. Good laws are the laws that protect human rights and enforce the obligations of government. Good laws means no one is above the law, no matter their richness and status. Good laws means that everyone is treated equally, no matter their religion, ethnicity, or social class. Good laws demand that they be adjudicated by an open and impartial judiciary, supported by fair and prompt trials. Good laws demand good people, good institutions to enforce them. Good institution like the court in Pakistan, which banned the use of death penalty for prisoners with mental disability. Good institution like the court, which characterized the climate crisis as a human rights violation. Good institution like the judges who safeguarded the right to protest of the annual women's march. But to play this role, judges too and their independence must be protected. If a judge fears for their life while adjudicating a case, if a judge is unable to summon the powerful or the security forces because of fears or threat, if judges are susceptible to corruption, bribery or political pressure, then the judiciary cannot play its role. Human rights are not protected and the laws are not vigorously enforced. So for the judiciary to play its role, the court must be accessible to all, particularly marginalized and disadvantaged group. That means it must be well resourced too. There should be adequate funding. Capacity must be strengthened and court and judges should be able to rely on proper infrastructures. That is key to an independent judiciary. Sadly, in Pakistan, courts are too often under-resourced. Judges are overworked, leading to a massive 2.1 million cases pending across Pakistan judiciary. When government, security services, the military, the police, the prison system fail to protect human rights, an independent judiciary is often the last bastion to protect us all. To understand the importance of an independent judiciary, let's recall what has happened 
without an independent judiciary. Let's recall what happened without judges willing and able to enforce the rule of law against those prepared to take the law in their own hands. Investing and protecting in a strong independent judiciary remains one of the best means and tools to design, to protect, to enforce human rights and the rule of law, and to protect us all against repression, against arbitrariness, against violence, conflict, and war. Thank you very much.